And then what did you do, Jada? Well, you know, I think from there, you know, as time went on, I got into a different kind of entanglement mm -hmm. with August. <laughs> back to my channel. In today's video, as you can tell by the title, I really want to get into the most recent Red Table Talk that Jada dropped on Facebook where her and Will got into um, or talked about her entanglement with August Alsina. Um, now initially I really wasn't going to do a video about this, but I just feel like there's a lot to unpack in that video. I feel like um, there's a lot of subliminal messages and under, um, and things you have to read between the lines. And But most importantly, I feel like there's a huge piece of the puzzle, a huge, a huge piece of the situation that people are not seeing and people are not talking about. And I think it's important to talk about. So I'm just going to jump right into it. But if you're not subscribed yet, please make sure you do so because you don't want to miss any of my videos because you know you're already hooked. You're already hooked, so go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> Before I jump into the video though, I just want to make sure I preface it by saying that I am in no way, shape, or form here to judge anybody. I'm not here to judge Jada and Will in their relationship because if that's the dynamic that works for them, then that's what works for them. And as far as Jada, um, people make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. People mess up. And she even said herself in the video that she wishes things could be different. But I also think we sh I also don't think we should overlook some of the problematic parts of that situation, some of the toxic parts of that situation, just because we love Will and Jada. And so I think we, it's really important for us to see what we can extract, what we can learn from the situation. I'm not going to play the whole video. It's like 12 minutes long, but I am going to play a few key pieces that I think um, are significant. And we're going to watch it together. And after we watch that little clip, I'm going to tell you guys the piece of the puzzle that everybody seems to be missing. The, 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 the toxic, problematic part of the situation that people are not talking about. I think it was about four and a half, four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, started a friendship with August. Mm -hmm. And we actually became really, really good friends. Mm -hmm. And it all started with him just needing some help. Mm -hmm. You know, me wanting to help his health, his mental state. Because for me, that was the thing when I when um, when Og first came around, he was he was really, really sick. sick. He was really, you know? really sick. Yeah. And the outpouring for him from our family was uh, initially about his health. Yeah. And I mean, we found all those different resources, mm -hmm. you know, to help pull him through. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, you and I were going through a very difficult time. Yeah. And we decided- I was done with your you, ass. Yeah, you kicked me to I the curb. I was done with you. Yeah. <laughs> We Marriages have that though. Yeah, Marriages have that. Yeah, we basically, mm -hmm. we broke up. We decided that we were going to separate for a period of time and you go figure out how to make yourself happy and I'll figure out how to make myself happy. Well, at that particular point in time, it was indefinite. Yeah, I really felt like we could be over. You yeah, know? no, and, we were over. And then what did you do, Jada? Well, you know, I think from there, you know, as time went on, I got into a different kind of entanglement mm -hmm. with August. This is your red table and you like brought yourself to the red table. I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. As far as what? You and I decided we were gonna take our space and what happened. Yeah, and then I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> Yes. A relationship. Yes, it was a relationship, absolutely. I was in a lot of pain and I was very broken. Now, in the process of that relationship, I definitely realized that you can't find happiness outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. And luckily enough, you and I were also going through a process of healing in a much different manner. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say we did everything that we could to get away from each other, only mm -hmm. to realize that that mm -hmm. wasn't possible. So we come to the red table. So I'm in, I'm in the Jada position right now. So, okay. you know, you, during that time, launched into an interaction mm -hmm. with August. What do you feel like um, you were looking for? I just wanted to feel good. Mm -hmm. It had been so long mm -hmm. since I felt good. Yeah. And it was really a joy to just help heal somebody. Yeah. I think that has a lot to do with my codependency. 
which is another thing that I had to learn to break in this cycle, just mm. that idea of needing to fix and being drawn to people that need help, whether it's your health or whether it's your addictions. Mm -hmm. There's something about that childhood trauma mm -hmm. um, that feels as though it can be fixed through fixing people mm -hmm. versus fixing me. Yeah. And I think that that whole process with Aug really showed me that mm -hmm. and taught me that. And I'm really grateful for that lesson. I actually don't look at it as a transgression at all. Through that particular journey, I learned so much mm -hmm. about myself and was able to really confront a lot of emotional immaturity, mm -hmm. emotional insecurity. Mm -hmm. And I was really able to do some really deep healing. Mm -hmm. You know, and as I came through and started to realize certain things about you and I, he decided to break all communication with me, right. which was totally understandable. Right. Um, and I let that be and hadn't talked to him since. Our experiences of working through it, fighting through it, talking through it, and therapizing right. through it. I think that the why now is weird. I'm grateful for the journey that you and I have had together yeah. because I feel like there are a lot of couples that go through those periods yeah. and a lot of couples that have to separate and yeah. think it's over. And, yeah. you know, the one thing I'll say about you and I is that there's never been secret. And I think that one of the things that I'm deeply grateful in this whole process between you and I is that we have really gotten to that new place yes. of unconditional love. There's just certain things that you have to go through and it's like... And I wish, you know, I wish that wasn't the case. <laughs> I do, I Absolutely. wish that yeah, sure. wasn't the hey, case. I sure wish it could be all magic and miracles. Yeah. You gotta go through some to get the answers. 25 years and counting. Mm. We ride together, we, we die, die together. together. Bad, Bad marriage, marriage for life. life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, <laughs> let me just start off by saying that I think it's really commendable that they can sit um, so publicly and talk so honestly and openly about her transgression, their transgressions, honestly, because let's face it, regardless of whether or not you know, he consented or he gave, whatever the case may be, regardless of how it was, they were still married. Like they were technically still married. They were not legally separated. It was a transgression. So I think it's really cool that they can talk so openly and honestly about it because you don't find that very often in, a, in, in marriages. Um, so I think that part is really cool. I can bend them on being able to do that. I will say this though, um, maybe it's just me, but judging by his demeanor and his um, body language, I feel like Will wasn't as comfortable as he was letting on with the whole situation. But regardless, I'm glad that um, that Jada was able to grow and learn that the only person who can make her happy is herself. I'm really glad that her relationship with August was able to help her heal from a lot of her childhood traumas. And, I, and I'm really glad that it made her relationship with Will even stronger. But I feel like a lot of people, including Will and Jader, are dismissing the fact that there was a whole other person's livelihood involved. Like a whole other young man's life was involved in this whole situation. So the very first thing that stood out to me and everybody else was the rhetoric that she tried to use, the entanglement rhetoric that she tried to use to kind of belittle the situation that she was in with August, which was in fact a full-blown relationship with feelings and, and love involved. And so that was my first thing. I'm really glad that Will called her out on it because I think it's very manipulative to try to um, make it seem like it was it was less than what it was. Here's my thing. When you look at the situation objectively, in my opinion, Jada's involvement with August was extremely predatory. Because think about it. This this man, who is 21 years younger than her, by the way, was in desperate need of love, guidance, and healing. He was basically broken when he met her. And as you guys saw in the video, she mentioned that part of the appeal for her was that she just needed to feel good. And she felt good helping heal somebody. But did she heal him? Did she really heal him or did she use him? The way she tried to oversimplify the way that her and August ended, 
she said that she started to realize some things about her and Will's relationship and August decided to cut off all communication. And I'm willing to bet that it was not that simple. From what I'm gathering from this whole situation, what happened was that August was broken, he was lost, he was in a very vulnerable state. And since her and Will were on the outs, since it seemed like Will was done with her for real, she decided to use August's vulnerability to her advantage. So she got into a relationship with him where she provided love, security, a space for healing for him. And then when her and Will seemed to be getting back together, um, she had to rip away all that love, that security, all that space that he, she provided for healing for him. She had to rip all that away and left him with even more issues and more trauma than he started off with. I just think it's important to talk about stuff like this and call it out when we see it because if we don't, not only are we condoning it, but we're normalizing it. And if and I don't know if you guys saw August Alcina's video, but when he talked about his relationship with, with Jada, he was like enthralled with her he threw himself into that relationship wholeheartedly because again he was broken he was empty and here here is this this older amazing wise woman coming to his help like of course he fell in love with her and he even said in the video that the ending of that relationship quite literally broke him like he, he literally felt like he died inside when that relationship ended the person who was supposed to be his mentor his healer ended up leaving him an empty shell of a person. I don't think that we should overlook this because I think it's really easy to get caught up in the success of a relationship or of a marriage and disregard the cost. At what cost? A young man's livelihood was involved. Is it okay to disregard the fact that he was basically preyed upon because Jada and Will's relationship became better? Do we ignore and dismiss his pain and the predatory nature of that relationship because technically there was a happy ending? Knowing and understanding someone's pain and trauma allowing them to lean on you and trust in you and using them to lick the wounds of your broken marriage and then walking away when you decide that you're done using them is predatory as hell and no one can tell me otherwise i also think it was really cringy how they were just able to laugh off the whole thing like a whole other person's heart and livelihood wasn't involved but again i'm not here to judge um i just think the takeaway here that a lot of people were missing is that yes we're all happy for jade and world that they reached that beautiful place in their marriage where they love each other unconditionally despite the, their infidelities and their transgressions but at what cost 25 years bad marriage for life but who was worried about august alcina's happy ending who's worried about his healing from the trauma that Jada left him to deal with. Food for thought. Um, I know this strays away from my usual content, but I really wanted to touch on this topic because I think there's a huge gender gap and um, double standards when it comes to predatory behavior. And I think just because Jada's a woman doesn't make the situation any less predatory. Um, and, I, and I think it was also very dismissive of her not to acknowledge the significant faults that she had in the situation given the role that she was supposed to have played in his life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys got a little something out of it. Um, and if you did, please, please, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me out a lot. It helps me um, just know that you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out. I also really want to hear what you guys think. What, did, what do you guys think about the situation overall? What do you agree with? What do you not agree with with, with what I said throughout this video? Um, just leave me comments down below. I really want to hear you guys' opinions. Um, but please don't forget to subscribe um, because that also helps me out a lot. <laughs> and make sure you hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss my next video because it's gonna be good you know it's gonna be good um thanks again so much for watching guys and i'll see you guys in my next video bye